Welcome to VSU TV's very own Blazer Sports Report. Alongside Bryce Zimmerman, I'm Kevin Allison, and we have an abundance of Blazer athletic information, as always. Kevin, you could not be more correct as intramurals are heating up, baseball and softball are making contact, and Blazer basketball is on its way to Tupelo for the madness. We'll start with the GSC tournament-bound men's Blazer basketball squad, but before their long trip to Tupelo, the Blazers had to finish out the season against the Argonauts of West Florida, who looked to invade the complex this past Saturday. Valdosta State would get it off quick as Ernest Scott with the lay-in. Blazers would take an early lead in this one. West Florida would fight back, but the tail of the tape was the land of three. As Michael Crane hits one there, you'll see Ernest Scott hitting four three-pointers in this game, and there was one of them, and here's another one as he drains it from the top of the key. Blazers on senior day looking to win. Michael Crane, sub, look at this pass over the shoulder. Ernest Scott knows his place on the court, and it's behind the three-point arc. His third one of the day, Marcus Gent, inside pass, fadeaway jump shot from Tony Baker, kissed it off the glass a little bit. T. Bake, wouldn't done, finishes out, give it up to Chip Stroud for three. His only three points on senior day. Now, outside to Tony, hesitates a little bit. No one came to guard him. Why not put that one up? He hits nothing but the bottom of the net. Draw Jones, utilizing his quickness fast down the floor, ends it with the lay-in with the left hand. Tony Baker, unbelievable pass. No look over the shoulder, outside to Ernest Scott, who would knock it through. And Gerard Jones, quickness, spin move, up and under, off the glass with the left hand. JJ utilizing his quickness. Marcus Gent, high off the glass, doesn't go. Ernest Scott can't do the rebound. Look at the Blazers fight for it. Scott, they will eventually get kicked out to Gent, who would find John Rogers underneath for the up and under and one to go as it hung on the rim for what seemed like an eternity. Here's Ernest Scott, the big long three, but it wasn't all good news for the Blazers as Marcus Gent right there would have a non-contact injury on his knee, hopefully non-ligament damage, but he's likely to be out for the rest of the season. VSU wins it 75-69, but on that somber note, Ernest Scott, 19 points, Seven assists and a block. Gerard Jones, 12 points and three assists. Crane and Rogers, 12 points apiece. Blazers finished the Gulf South Conference schedule on top by three games with a 13-1 conference record. West Georgia came up strong to end at 10-4 and, and get the two-seat out of the East. West Florida, Montevallo, and North Alabama all playoff bound. Valdosta State jumps up four spots to the number three spot in the nation, 24-2 overall. Metropolitan State holds that number one ranking. Tarleton State, Pfeiffer, and Francis Marion round out the top five. Well, congratulations to the men's squad for their excellent season, but they aren't the only Blazers to be represented in Tupelo. The ladies are on their way as well. Before the men even took the floor on at the complex on Saturday, the ladies looked to take care of business against the conference foe, West Florida. See Monica Lee driving in, kicks it out to Tracy Newton, back in, Candace Farrell, who had a knee injury, been out for the past few games, comes back strong on this day. See an elbow to the face of Danielle Hernandez, goes down. She recovers, though. Amber Daniels back, Tiffany Van up the top, kicks it back down low, drives in. Fighting for the rebound. Nice second effort by the Lady Blazers. See Tiffany Van, she can handle the ball extremely well, passes it on over. Danielle Hernandez, who's never really all that gun shy, passes off Courtney Parker. Back over to Van. Nice ball movement for the Lady Blazers on this day. Courtney Parker puts in the two. That's how it should be done. See again, ball movement. Moving it all around. All five players seem to touch it. Whenever the Lady Blazers offense is working well. Easy two points. Tracy Newton right here. Gonna get her pocket picked by number 33 of West Florida. See, once again, Lady Blazers trying to take it off, having to fight for everything with the Lady Blazers. That's how it's going to be in the conference tournament. Tracy Newton taking it off court, runs into her own player there. Not exactly too happy, but convert, put two more points home. So as we talked about, Tiffany Van able to handle the ball, passes it over. Tracy Newton on the day for Newton. Four of 11 shooting with 12 total points. See again, there's two more. 67-54 the final. Candace Farrell coming back strong off the knee injury. 17 points in 23 minutes. Tracy Newton, again, pretty good all-around day. 12 points, 3 assists. Amber Daniels, 11 points with 3 steals. See, 
about Austin State, taking that fifth spot to go into the GSE tournament in Tupelo. Six and eight, Gold South Conference record, but a 17 and nine overall. And earlier this week, Blazer sports reporter Tiffany Johnson was able to catch up with Lady Blazer head coach Kylie Hill. As the Lady Blazer season ends for their conference games, Coach Kylie Hill let me in on what some of his expectations were for the 2003-2004 season. Number one, you know, we want to be Gulf South Conference East Division champions. Second expectation comes to is that we want to be Gulf South Conference uh, tournament champions. Third expectation runs into is that uh, we want to be want to be in a, playing it regionally, nationally, and the fourth and final expectation we want to graduate all the players who play for us. Although the first expectation of being Gulf South Conference East Division champions was not met, Hill is very optimistic about winning the tournament. He states what will happen as a result of the tournament game. And what takes place is that. The game that we win in the tournament will factor into the overall region ranking. Uh, our ability to win in that tournament uh, will elf, help elevate our raising up in the, in the region rankings, hopefully end up in a 8th, 8th, 7th, ninth position, which allows us to hopefully get an at-large bid if we're not fortunate enough to win the tournament, uh, tournament uh, Gulf South Tournament next week in Tupelo, Mississippi. With this being his fourth year coaching for the Lady Blazers, Hill affirms that he has seen a definite progression in the program and in himself. Uh, what have I learned as a, as a coach here? I think that each team is different. Each play, each, each, each year is a brand new journey. And I think that the, you, you must learn to enjoy that journey, make it as fun as possible, but also savor every moment, a moment because once it's, once it's gone, it's gone. By accomplishing yet another goal of graduating players Monica Lee, Danielle Marshall, and Danielle Hernandez, Coach Hill is working toward building the future of the program. He has already began recruiting and is confident that many of the remaining players will step up as a team and work toward an even more successful season next year. Reporting to you from Blazer Sports Report, I am Tiffany Johnson. Up to date results from the Gold South Conference tournament taking place in Tupelo, Mississippi. Your Valdosta State University Blazers victorious over the 18th ranked team in the country, Christian Brothers, 61 to 50. Strong performance once again by the senior Ernest Scott, 18 total points. Great from behind the arc once again, five for eight shooting from the land at three. Another strong performance by Tony Baker filling in for the injured Marcus Gent, 17 points in the game, 13 of those coming in an impressive second half. Central Arkansas, the fifth seed from the West, shocking the entire Gulf South Conference, defeating the one seed, Henderson State, by two points, 62 to 60. Montevallo defeats Wachita Baptist, 67-53, the three seed from the East. As you see, and West Georgia, in a close game, defeats Harding University, 78-77. And they'll take on Central Arkansas. And you see in the semifinals, the third matchup on the year for Montevallo versus the Valdosta State Blazers. Be, should be another close one. Michael Crane came up big in the two regular season matchups for the Blazers. And the men's championship game will take place on Sunday, March 7th, 1.30 start in Tupelo, Mississippi at the Bancorp South Center. Make sure you tune in to your local station to hear the, uh, the game. And West Georgia on the women's side, although VSU is out of the game, defeated Southern Arkansas 55-51. They will take on Christian Brothers. And as you see, the ladies went down in overtime to Henderson State, and they'll face West Alabama in the semifinals. And Delta State, West Florida will clash today as well as Lincoln Memorial and Central Florida, Arkansas at, in Tupelo. Women's championship game. Sunday, March 7th, takes place after the men's game, 345 start in Tupelo, Mississippi at the Bank Corp South Center. When we return here on BSR, I had the opportunity to catch up with head coach Jim Yarbrough along with Ernest Scott and Gerard Jones on the hardwood of the PE complex. We'll be back with that on Blazer Sports Report. This is your girl, Amber Daniels, number 32, and you're watching me on the Blazer Sports Report. Valdosta State University, the pathway to success. I love VSU because from the moment I came here, it's just been like a second home. This place was just like home for me, and I love it. I'll always love it. Just above the Florida border, VSU is a second home for students from all over Georgia. 
47 states and 58 countries. A quality university degree, a unique second home, a great location. Valdosta State University, your pathway to success. Hey, I'm Kylie Hill, the head coach for the Lady Blazers. You're watching Lady, the Blazer Sports Report. Stay tuned, it's ready. Welcome back to the Blazer Sports Report. I'm Bryce Zimmerman. I'm lucky enough to be on the floor of the complex in Valdosta, Georgia, alongside three great people in the Valdosta State basketball program. Gerard Jones to my left, Coach Yarbrough, and of course, Ernest Scott, the senior. Uh, glad to have all of you with us today. Glad to be here. Glad to be here. Uh, first off, we'll just talk about the season so far. Uh, one of the best seasons in Valdosta State basketball. 13 and one Gulf South Conference record. 24 and two overall, and of course the birth to the Gulf South Conference tournament in Tupelo, number one seed. Talk about the season and maybe how that you guys have just progressed from the beginning and now to the end of the regular season, getting ready and to go off in the pow uh, playoff bound play. Can we go first. Sure. Um, well, really just. We started off, you know, in August, we had three goals to win 20 games, you know, to get to Tupelo, um, to be the really number one seed there. And um, we've accomplished all our goals so far. You know, we have a lot loftier goals now with the Go South Conference Tournament coming up and the NCAA. And really just, the coaches have always um, stressed for us to improve every day, you know, get better and grow as a team and grow as individual players. And We've really done that, and our record is shown in the way we played all year. We know we've shown a lot of heart and a lot of character, and I just think that's an extension of the coaching staff. So, well, Ernest pretty much said it, said it all for me. Uh, <laughs> I'm just out uh, here for the ride, and uh, I just want to keep it going. You know? Well, see, Ernest had this chance, this opportunity uh, a few years ago as a sophomore to go to Tupelo, and then also on to the national tournament. This is your first time. I mean, how excited are you, JJ? I can't wait to play. I've been. Ever since they said that we clinched it, I've been ready to play since then, so I kind of just been bidding my time. Coach, what of, uh, about this team in particular, obviously one of the best defenses of all time, really, in Valdosta State basketball, only allowing what, just 50, less than 51 points, 52 yeah. points a game. Uh, talk about the defense and how it's improved since day one of the season and uh, these two guys in particular. Well, I thought our defense would be, you know, our trademark, our identity all year long. Um, you know, where you can control people and then let your offense evolve and let guys fill in their roles and grow, and as, as Ernest mentioned earlier, so that guys can get confidence in the system, figure out how they're going to get points. But defensively, we take a tremendous amount of pride in that. To me, as we've talked about many times before, defense is about being unselfish and hustle, and if you do that, then you've got a good team concept. And so we share the basketball on the offensive end, we help each other, and we play great individual defense on the other end. And uh, that's who we are, and we talk about identity all the time. And so we've been able to maintain that identity. You know, we haven't gone in night in and night out and just crushed people. We go in in a, a very steady way, continue to play defense for 40 minutes, continue to come at you, figure out what you're doing to us. We've seen a lot of junk defenses. Slowly but surely, we find a way to, to get the lead, maintain it, and, and, and win games. And it's been a good formula for us. We want to keep it going in two blows. After three now solid seasons, uh, spectacular for the first, uh, for the 2001-2002 campaign, obviously a magical ride. Last season, uh, still 18 wins, still a good season, and now this season, unbelievable 24 I'm gonna, wins. I'm going to correct you there, but 19 wins. 19 I, I, wins. That's... I'm, I'm going to be greedy. Yeah. <laughs> Take that win. Every win seven. you can get. We're 19 and 7. And uh, you've had this season, once again, has that magical flow to it, uh, much like the 01 02 season. Now you've got Ernest, who was there, has the experience, Gerard Jones, the additions. How, is the Valdosta State basketball program starting to gain respect in the players' eyes as well as the coaches? I think so. I, I think we're, we've grown a great deal, and, you know, it starts with the basics and the fundamentals, and we recruited Ernest's class, and that included Chip Stroud, and, and then we added some other the junior class. And, Tried to get JJ here originally, but he, he detoured for a year and then came to us, and that was good. But he had a great year of learning last year and getting all the experience in the GSC. But yeah, I think we've gone from being a regional power now to being potentially really a national power. And when you mentioned Valdosta State football, everybody knows it in the country. But now we've spent a lot of weeks in the USA Today each week in that poll, and now in the in the state papers, in the local papers, and. You know, now we've got a kind of a national reputation in Division II basketball. Certainly the Division I's don't want to play us. So, uh, it, you know, we keep things the same. We don't want to deviate. We want to bring in good people who will work and learn the system. And 
Yeah, I think it's grown and, and as you say, magical. But the reason it's magical is because this team continues to stay hungry. These guys, and Marcus Jenner is getting treatment right now, and the other juniors and seniors, and the freshmen have learned, you never, you're relentless, you never stop, you know, because from one weekend to the next, your, your, all your feelings of accomplishment can go south, and all of a sudden you feel like you're not playing very well because this league is so good, and one weekend to the next, everything can change. Nothing changes this weekend. It's going to be focus. It's going to be relentless. It's going to be about VSU defense, and hopefully very positive results will happen because of it. What do you guys think about that? JJ, I'll start with you. Yeah, what do you think about that? Well, uh, you know you like to talk, JJ. Come on. <laughs> well, I just feel that uh, we are having a pretty good season. And, uh, well, I'm just happy. I'm just happy for the whole, the whole situation. And I, I'm just ready to go. I want more, you know what I'm saying? I want more out of the uh, season. Stay hungry. Yeah, I'm, I'm just hungry right now. So that's basically what I can say right now. Ernest? Um, Really just the biggest difference, I think my sophomore year, a lot of people didn't really expect a whole lot out of us. You know, as a team, we expected a lot out of us, but like people outside of the program really didn't know what we were about, really didn't know what we could do. I think now, um, on top of our own expectations of ourselves and our program, you know, a lot of other people now are looking at us and they're starting to expect more of us. And you know, that's something that we wanted. You know, um, my freshman year, you know, we really didn't have that good of a season. It was a lot of adjustments, you know, new coach, new system, new everything pretty much. And now, you know, we've had some guys who've been here and we know what it's about, we know what we need to do. And if the young guys come along for the ride like they have, you know, there's nothing but success for us in the future. So what are your expectations going in? And if you would like, give us a prediction. No predictions. No predictions. <laughs> well, um, we'd be disappointed if we didn't come out with the championship. That's pretty much all. That's what we work for. That's why we're the number one seed, because we expect to go over there and do very well and to bring back the um, conference championship and ho hopefully host the regional here. And that's what we're intending to do, and we don't want to settle for anything less. Like I said, I agree with Ernest on that. Uh, <laughs> it's the well, family, I agree with the family. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad it's not a political debate. We have no discussion here. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'm looking forward, looking forward to playing. Uh, I think that uh, we should do pretty, pretty good at the uh, tournament. All right, well, thank you guys. Well, you know, these guys, as a final comment, you know, they, I, I sense from them from a, a long time back that they wanted to not just crack the top 25 or not get into the region poll. I think they wanted to push beyond that. They got in the top 25, and I got a sense that they wanted to get to the top 10. And I really, at some point, they really believed, and maybe it was early on, earlier than later, and it just took me a while to recognize it. But I, I felt that the, these, uh, there was a core group of guys who wanted more out of this and uh, have made that commitment. And when you have a group that's like that, um, you can experience some great things. We will be disappointed if we don't go to Tupelo and represent well, but I'll say this in all fairness, a uh, very, very good chance that our first round game will be against the number 22 ranked team in the country. So we, we, we respect all our opponents. You know, the GSC is different. You don't play the last place team in your league. You play the four or five seed that you play is won 16, 18, 20, 22 games in some cases. So it's a very competitive league. That's why our league's going to be one of the top two or three in the nation, which makes what we've just done this regular season even more impressive. But you know, still many, many important things for us to do. And uh, you know, uh, beyond the Tupelo, hopefully a chance to run at the national championship, and uh, you know, some more history to make in this 50th year of Blazer basketball. Thank you guys for coming out and uh, doing this interview with us on the hardwood here at the complex. Uh, for everybody out there watching Blazer Sports Report, don't forget to support these guys. You can listen to them on the, your local radio stations, and then hopefully we'll come back. Hopefully we'll come back and have a, a region game or two hosted here at the complex. Thanks a lot, and we'll be back with more on Blazer Sports Report. I'm Coach Chris Hatcher of Valdosta State Blazers, and you're watching the Blazer Sports Report. Go Blazers! I got a ham sandwich and some pretzels. You want some pretzels? No, I'm just gonna treat you some cookies or something. Like what? I don't know. Button an orange. Forget it. Hey, Jay, you got anything? Don't ask Jay. Why not? Jay never has me. What's up with that? Are you on a diet or something? Yeah, a diet. Jay's on a diet. That's all right, man. We, we understand. My mom's on a diet. <laughs> I'm Coach Tommy Thomas, and you're watching the Blazer Sports Report.
Thanks for watching Blazer Sports Park. And good job on your interview, by the way, Bryce. Thank but we you. do have so many more athletics here to cover on BSR. That's right, and we're going to start off with baseball as the Kings of the Diamond took the hill three times this past weekend. We'll get right into it, and this Tuesday, and we've got some footage from the game against Flagler. Valdosta State on Tuesday hosted Flagler College at four at Billy Grant Field. The Blazers would end up winning the game five to four, but recently they've had some trouble winning consistently, about a 500 club right now, and getting a lot of use from their starting pitching. Complete games this weekend from Robbie Walkman, along with Adam Lingenfeld. They're seven innings out of Zach Stewart, so they're not utilizing the bullpen as much, throwing a lot of pitches. The lineup, however, has been hitting fairly well, but not consistently. Blazers have to get consistent. They've gotten so much more aggressive on the base pass already. VSU, this was, of course, last Friday's game against Dowling. Lose 9-8. Zach Stewart with those seven innings pitched 12 strikeouts. Greg Connell, 2-4 for four with two ribbies. Blazers committed four errors, while Dowling committed six. Sloppy game for both teams. Blazers were actually up 8-1 in that game. 7-1 victory over Florida Southern, however, in the next game. Adam Lingenfeld through that complete game. Only one earned run allowed. 10 strikeouts. Greg Adams, 3 for 4, 2 ribbies. John McDonald, 2 for 3 with a double and 2 RBIs. And then the final game of the weekend, Blazers lost it 4 to 0. Zach Stewart, 5.2 innings pitched, 4 in runs, 9 strikeouts. Rob Morgan, uh, 1 for 2 with a double. Greg Connell, 0 for 3, 3 strikeouts. Valdosta State has not opened Gold South Conference play yet, but 6-7 and seven overall, just under 500 for the season. Alabama Huntsville, 9-1 and one on top of the conference. Baseball upcoming schedule March 6th at Northern Kentucky. There's two games at Billy Grant Field at 1 p.m. March 7th, Northern Kentucky. Once again, four games against the Kentuckians. Billy Grant Field, 130. March 10th versus Georgia College and State at Billy Grant Field. That's a 4 p.m. start at March 11th. The Albany State Golden Rams come to town, or actually we go up there at 4 p.m. The softball Blazers are off to a tough start this season as well, and it didn't get any easier this past week with seven games. Unfortunately, the Blazers lost five of the seven games. All of the games were played in the city of Valdosta, with some of the matchups played at Freedom Park. The softball Blazers were outscored 25 to 18 during the week. See VSU losing Florida Southern three to one, Tampa seven to one. Did the Defeated uh, Lynn 4 to 3 and defeated Rollins as well for zip. And on the 29th, they defeated Nova South, Nova Southern, excuse me, 5 to 3, uh, but fell to St. Louis Leo 1 to 0 and Florida Tech by one run 4 to 3. You see Valdosta State 0 and 6 so far in Gulf South Conference play, 3 and 16 overall. West Florida and Alabama Huntsville undefeated. West Georgia. No wins as well in the Gulf South Conference. The rest of the team haven't started conference play as of yet. And upcoming for the softball team, March 7th at West Alabama in Livingston, Alabama at 5 p.m. And another doubleheader the next day at West Alabama. And on March 10th, travel, they actually take on Southern Indiana, double doubleheader at the softball complex. 3 o'clock start, get on out there. Blazer tennis is finally underway after the torrential downpours of last week canceled play. On an unusually chilly day in February, VSU men's and women's tennis team finally met up with Fort Valley State. The ladies, which are ranked 11th nationally, came up strong and hard in the beginning with nine unanswered points against Fort Valley State Wildcats. Valdosta State men's tennis also won big against Fort Valley, thrashing the Wildcats with a 9-0 win. The VSU men are ranked number six nationally, and both teams are showing aspects of a strong season. VSU also hosted Georgia Southwestern this past Sunday. VSU men's and women's squads defended its home courts by stomping both doubles and singles. The number nine seems to be the lucky number for the women as the, they baffled the Georgia Southwestern women 9-0, while the men showcased their talent by winning 7-2. The next home game tennis match will be March 7th at 2 p.m. The women will be playing March 11th at 3 p.m. against Auburn Montgomery. Men, ITA men's tennis ranking number six, Valdosta State, Barry, North Florida, BYU, West Florida, and Hawaii Pacific round out the top six. 
ITA women's tennis ranking BYU, Lynn, Barry, and Valdosta State ranked number 11 in the ITA rankings. March 7th versus Lander University at the Complex Tennis Courts, 2 p.m. March 11th, Auburn University of Montgomery comes to town, 3 p.m. start to that one. March 13th, Alabama Huntsville at Her in Harrogate, Tennessee, 9.30 a.m. start. And then March 14th at Lincoln Memorial, or versus Lincoln Memorial in Harrogate, Tennessee, 9.30 a.m. for that. For the women's tennis schedule, Auburn University Montgomery comes into the complex tennis courts, 3 p.m. start. March 13th versus Montevallo at Harrogate, Tennessee, 9.30 a.m. start. March 13th, once again, more games played for VSU women's tennis. Alabama Huntsville at 2.30 in Harrogate and Lincoln Memorial at 9.30 the next day. Have you ever wondered what it's like to have to hit a tiny white ball with conditions making it so difficult to stand up straight and any slight miss hit on the club would send a shock up your arms? If you haven't, you may want to talk to the members of the Blazer Golf Team as they travel down to Gulf Breeze, Florida as there is slightly more than just a breeze for the tournament. Strong winds and temperatures that were chillier than, were, than expected led to the Blazers shooting 98 over par. DSU finished 7th overall out of 15 teams and were led by Scott Meyer with rounds of 77, 81, and 81. DSU wasn't the only team that couldn't handle the conditions as average scores on the final round of play were well over par. Post West Florida took top honors. And the team travels across the country to Del Mar, California to participate in the Southern Cal Intercollegiate Tournament. Coach Jared Purvis neglected to alter his lineup as the same five golfers will represent VSU for the four straight tournament this spring, despite the fact that others are waiting in the wings to showcase their talents at tournament level. We'll be back with some intramural divisional basketball action as well as your always important intramural update. Stay with us on Blazer Sports Report. Oh yeah. You're watching Blazer Sports Report. Go, Go Blazers! Blazers! Welcome to Valdosta State University. Beautiful, isn't it? Are you upset about pesticides in your food, crude oil in your oceans, littering in our streets, clear-cutting of national forests, the killing of dolphins and sea turtles, destruction of wetlands? Now's the time to join Students Against Violating the Environment. SAVE helps by raising awareness among the student and faculty body about environmental issues on campus, in the community, and around the world. It's easy to make a difference. Simply call this number and join SAVE. Think globally, act locally. Hi, this is Coach Jim Yarbrough, and you're watching the Blazer Sports Report. Thanks for coming back here on Blazer Sports Report, and it's one of our favorite times of the show, intramural time. That's right, and the divisional basketball playoffs got into action this past weekend, and our very own Marquise Turner was there for the scoop. Welcome to this week's intramural basketball division championship. First, let's check out the women's A-League championship after Jeremy Sweets takes on the dynasty. This was a very competitive game, as you can tell by the coach's reaction. It was, very, it was a hard-fought battle that came down to the very end. But the Sweets managed to pull a 42 to 39 upset over the dynasty. We caught up with the winning coach after the game to hear about this exciting matchup. Sweets, uh, Jeremy Register. Um, how do you feel about your win that you pulled out tonight? Uh, I feel great, man. It's what we played for all season. We ain't win state, but we won campus, so uh, I'm proud of the girls. Our next action comes from the guys' A League Championship as the Hypnotic Squad takes on Calhoun's crew. This was a very tight game in the beginning, but the crew pulled away late in the game to claim a 59 to 47 victory over the Hypnotic Squad. I'm here with head basketball coach of the Calhoun Squad, uh, Sean Calhoun. How do you feel about your victory tonight? It was a uh, great victory. Uh, couldn't have done it without my teammates and. Uh, this, this win is for Chip uh, Stroud and Nick Gass. They uh, had to leave us today, but we won for them, and the team played great. It was a great win. Our third and final game comes from the men's Big League Championship, where the pound took on We All We Got. <laughs> this game was played in front of a record-breaking crowd of 27. 
Both teams played their heart out, but the pound managed to pull away with the 59 to 44 victory over We All We Got. We caught up later in the game with the winning coach to hear his comments uh, upon this victory. Basketball coach of the pound, Tracy McGrady, I mean, Jeffrey Welch. Uh, how do you feel on tonight's victory? Yeah, we, we played good as a team, you know, we just ran the ball, beat him down the floor, hit him in transition, played good on defense. So. I'm Marquise Turner reporting for the Blazers Sports Report. Some unbelievable action over there at the complex for uh, intramural basketball as a men's A-League champion, as we saw, Calhoun's crew took the crown. B-League, the pound. Mm. <laughs> they, uh, I guess they, they sicked it to the teams, I don't know. Uh, to, to win in women's open league, Jeremy Sweet's team, they win. Fine you, congratulations to them for winning the Greek League Women's Championship. And I, for the Colorex team, pretty original name, PB. For peanut butter? I have no idea. They win uh, the Colorex Championship. Some crazy names. It's but craziness. If you want your chance Absolutely. to win a, a t shirt, as these teams did, and get on BSR as well, you may want to stick to, to this. It's intramural update time. Find out what intramurals you get an active in. Yay! Basketball All Championships March 9th, 8:30 p.m. in the Rec Center. Try to get out there and break that record crowd at 27. Ultimate Frisbee Tuesdays, Thursdays, four and five o'clock at North Campus. Ultimate Soccer Tuesdays and Thursdays from four to five p.m. Actually, it's just regular soccer. Use your feet, not your hands, at North Campus. Actually, it's played on a miniature type field. Tennis. Not near your courts, Tuesdays and Thursdays, 7 to 10 at the Student Rec Center Tennis Courts. Miniature tennis would be ping pong. Softball begins Monday, March 8th, and plays every Monday through Thursday, 8 to 11 p.m. at Freedom Park. It's yeah. a lot of fun. I'm ready for that one. And Batman, back Ooh. again this semester. Entries due Tuesday, March 23rd. Defend your crown. They have doubles you want to enter there, Bryce? Maybe. Swimming. Meet entries are due. I can find somebody better than you and probably a better swimmer. Entries due Tuesday, March 23rd. For more information, call Campus Recreation, 333-5898. Are you doubting my skills as a badminton player? Do you have what it takes to uh, be ultimate badminton player number one? You know, I think we may find out. I don't think so. We'll find out, hey, next week on Blazer Sports Report. Stay with us, same as always. Hello and welcome to this edition of your Blazer Sports Report. Alongside Kevin Allison, I'm Bryce Zimmerman. It's great to be here as always, and even better to be bringing you the latest in Blazer athletics. Baseball, softball, golf, and tennis seasons are all rolling along with basketball in postseason play. That's absolutely right, as the men's Blazer basketball squad traveled to Tupelo, Mississippi last Thursday to open up the Gulf South Conference Tournament. The Blazers played 19th ranked Christian Brothers in the first round on Thursday afternoon. With the absence of Marcus Gent for the rest of the season, the Blazers looked to former sixth man Tony Baker for some offense. Baker stroked 17 points in just 24 minutes of play. Senior Ernest Scott also added 18 points along with six rebounds as the Blazers, Blazers outlasted Christian Brothers 61-50. With the first round win, the Blazers matched up with Montevallo for the third time this season. The Blazers offense didn't show up for this game, however, only able to muster up 52 points to, in a loss. Junior guard Gerard Jones was the high scorer for Valdosta State Blazers with 12 points. Blazers in the 
the season uh, on top of the Gulf South Conference with a 13-1 record, 25-3 overall. The eventual Gulf South Conference champions, Montevallo, 9-5 only in the conference, 21-9 overall. West Georgia, our hated foes, second. You know, with the end of Gulf South Conference tournament play, a number of postseason accolades have been named. Coach Jim Yarbrough named Coach of the Year for the Gulf South Conference. Leads the Blazers to a 25-3 record, an outstanding 13-1 record in conference. Mm -hmm. I mean, just unbelievable year from Coach Jim Yarbrough, and he preaches a lot of things that make successful basketball programs. One of those things, obviously, defense. End the year, number one defense in the entire country, number one in field goal percentage allowed, allowing only 50, under 51 points per game. Unbelievable to hold opponents, especially in a scoring conference like the Gulf South, to under 51 is uncanny. And he uses his tools. Gerard Jones, an outstanding defensive marker. John Rogers, defensive rebounder and block shot. Same thing with Ernest Scott. I mean, he uses all those tools, and now he's making a run at the South Region and National Tournament. So, congratulations to everybody with the Gulf South Conference accolades. And as Coach Yarbrough would like to preach, it's team over individuals. It always is. Even though some individuals got some accolades, mm -hmm. Michael Crane goes second to the, uh, to the second Gulf South Conference team, and uh, Ernest Scott, first Gulf South Conference accolade. Still no player of the week through the regular season under Coach Jim Yarborough for Valdosta State. That's unbelievable. But I'm sure he'll take that third, third in the country ranking. Great news, though, for Valdosta State and this program here is we are number one in the South region, which means, guess what? We get to host the South Region portion of the national tournament at the complex. And there you see March 13th, game one, Eckerd versus Florida. That starts at noon. March 13th, Rollins takes on Benedict. Rollins, 24 and 5. They were the two seed in the South Region. That game starts at 2.30. March 13th, game three, Morehouse, an in-state rival up against Henderson State from Arkansas, of course, the complex. 6 p.m. that start, and then Valdosta State takes on Montevallo for a fourth time. That's game four on the day at the PE Complex at 8.30 p.m. Game 14th, the game one winner will take on game two winner at the Complex at five, and March 14th again, game three versus game four, 7.30 start. And then the region championship game, that'll be at the Complex, 7 p.m. Hopefully Valdosta State will be there. Should be some exciting action at the complex, but the road to Tupelo for the Lady Blazers proved to be a bit more difficult as they had to play an opening round game against the Western Division's four seed on Wednesday. As you heard on last week's edition of Blazer Sports Report, the Lady Blazers couldn't pull off the opening round victory in overtime as the eventual champions, Henderson State, outscored the Lady Blazers in the extra period 12 to 1. Aisha Carter had an amazing day for the Lady Reddies with 23 points and 14 rebounds. See, Valdosta State ends the year 6-8 in the Gulf South Conference, 17-10 overall. West Alabama 12-2, 21-7 with West Florida and Lincoln Memorial following. We'll be right back here on Blazer Sports Report with softball, baseball, tennis, golf, and some behind the scenes looks at what goes on on a VSU TV production. Stay with us. You're watching the Blazers Sports Report. Go Blazers! Somewhere around the world, there are men and women of the armed forces risking their lives, helping rebuild communities after natural disasters, collecting toys for needy children, tutoring kids in school, these are your sons and daughters who work to keep us safe, secure, and free. Dedicated men and women who put their country first. Valdosta State University, the pathway to success. I love VSU because from the moment I came here, it's just been like a second home. This place was just like home for me, and I love it. I'll always love it. Just above the Florida border, VSU is a second home for students from all over Georgia. 47 states and 58 countries. A quality university degree, a unique second home, a great location. Valdosta State University, your pathway to success.
spread the word. I'm Coach Tommy Thomas, and you're watching the Blazer Sports Report. Blazer Sports Report back here. Thanks for tuning in. Plenty more action from the Flame Red and Black this past weekend. Absolutely, and Blazer Baseball took the diamond five times in the past week, four of which were at home against Northern Kentucky. On Saturday, the Blazers hosted their opponents from the Bluegrass State with a doubleheader. In the first game, the Blazers shut down the Norse on the strength of Adam Lingenfelter. Lingenfelter pitched seven innings without allowing a run. Offensively, Greg Adams went one for three with a two-run double. Blazers win five to nothing. The second game on Saturday, the Blazers received another strong pitching performance from Robbie Walkman, who went all seven innings allowing just three earned runs. Blazer bats started cooking as Robbie Morgan drove in three runs and John McDonald tripled in another. Valdosta State swept Saturday with a 7-4 win. On Sunday, Brian Bennett got the call from Coach Tommy Thomas, but wasn't in the game for long as Norse bats invaded Billy Grant. Alex Frank went 3-for-3 three three with one RBI. Matt Weidman pitched a complete game, allowing just three runs. Blazers dropped the first one on Sunday, 9-3. Final game of the weekend, and the Blazers were about to get an up-close and personal look at North center fielder Alex Frank. Frank was perfect on the day, going 3-for-3 three three with two solo home runs. But that wasn't enough from the invading Northerners, as Greg Connell answered with the two-run jack. Then in the bottom of the seventh, Justin Cedar walked in Brad Brown from third for a 5-4 to four victory. VSU on March 3rd defeated Columbus 14-9. Greg Connell went three for five with the home run and a double, five RBIs. John McDonald one for four with the home run. Greg Adams also with the home run and an RBI. And on March the 6th, Valdosta State defeats Northern Kentucky. As you said, Adam Lincoln felt their complete game, five nothing for VSU. And VSU takes second game, seven four. Robbie Walkman, complete game, five hitter. And John McDonald two for four with the triple. And losing to Northern Kentucky in the third game, 9-3. Ryan Bennett only two innings pitched. Robbie Morgan, though, good day, 2-4, two, two RBIs. And they come back, win 5-4. Render Parkman only three innings pitched, four hits, two in runs, two Ks there. Greg Connell hitting another one out. And Valdosta State, 11-8 overall. No conference play as of yet. West Georgia still 16-2. And Alabama Huntsville also with only two defeats on the season. And with the collegiate baseball newspaper poll, see Valdosta State University 11 and 8 overall, but still 29th in the country. Two Gold South Conference teams, though, Alabama Huntsville and Delta State, in the top five in that poll. Upcoming schedule March 15th at Billy Grant Field, Edward Waters College, and March 16th, Flagler College down in St. Augustine, Florida. March 17th versus Thomas University, Billy Grant Field, 5 o'clock, first pitch. The ladies of VSU softball were at it again, traveling to West Alabama, hoping to cash in their first conference win of the year. The offensive fireworks were out in the first inning of the first game of the three-game set as VSU got off to a hot start, putting a three-spot on the board. Two home runs in the first by Jesse Ortiz and Lindsey Walker provided the scoring to the start of the game off for the Blazers. The Lady Tigers answered back with two home runs of their own in the bottom of the inning as Tamara Neal and Julie Burkett went yard. As West Al scored four in the inning, pitchers Brooke King and Christian Cheney settled down after the first only allowing one run apiece for their respective teams. The Lady Blazers, although, Lady Blazers, although out hitting the Lady Tigers lost the opener, 5-4. to four. West Alabama managed to score in every inning in the second game as VSU used three pitchers. Starter Ashley Ward got touched up for seven runs for the Blazers as Tamara Neal and Shannon Goggins hit home runs for West Alabama. Casey Cockerham kept the Lady Blazers bats in check, only allowing three hits and a run. West Alabama over Valdosta State, 9-2-1. Nine 9-1 to, nine to in game two. There we go. Lady Blazers stormed back, though, on Monday as they came out looking for their first conference victory. A three-run first for VSU set the tone for the game, along with strong pitching by Amanda Edwards and Brooke King. VSU tacked on two more runs in the fourth and one more to seal the deal in the seventh as VSU demonstrated ABC softball, manufacturing all of their runs. 
First conference win for the Lady Blazers comes on a dominant performance, shutting out the Lady Tigers 6 to nothing. Valdosta State 1-8 in the Gulf South Conference and 4-18 overall. West Florida 6-0 in the GSC, 12-7 overall. Upcoming schedule, March 17th versus St. Cloud State. Two games there at the softball complex, 4 p.m. start. Congratulations to the women's softball team for getting their first GSC conference win. But two of the top programs in Division II tennis dueled on the hard courts this past weekend as 7th-ranked Lander came to town to take on your 6th-ranked Blazers. After losing 2 of 3 in doubles play, the Blazers came out strong, triumphing in 4 of their 6 singles matches. Number 1 singles player Eduardo Wincombe defeated Lander's number 1 Rob Steckley in an exciting 3-set match, 6-2, 3-6, 6-3, to set the tone for the Blazers. Christoph Schneider, Peter Kreechfeldt, Heiko Vrundelik all followed with straight sec victories. Vrundelik pulled off the double dip as he and his partner Philip Locke were successful in doubles. Upcoming for the men's tennis, we travel to Harrogate, Tennessee to take on Alabama Huntsville as well as Lincoln Memorial the next day on March 14th. March 16th, Georgia College and State comes to town here in Valdosta at the Complex Tennis Court's 2 o'clock start and Three days later on March 19th, Southwest Baptist, 9 o'clock at the Complex Tennis Courts. Women's tennis. They travel to Harrogate, Tennessee as well on the 13th. They face Montevallo in that first match. And then later on they travel, they face Alabama Huntsville, 2.30 start, and one day later in Harrogate, Lincoln Memorial is their foe. And last, Georgia College and State comes to the Complex Tennis Courts. 2 o'clock start on the 16th of March. The respectable, respectable men of golf re returned home for their trip across country as they finished a strong seventh in the Southern Cal Intercollegiate Tournament in Del Mar, California. Kevin Dukowski turned in an extremely impressive performance, finishing seventh overall with rounds of 72, 75, and 73. Spencer Provo, Brian Hurtag, Josh Tompkins, and Scott Meyer all played well for the Blazers. The top-ranked team, California State Chico, won the tourney over CSU Stanislaus by four shots. Golf schedule March 29th through 30th, Bobcat Invitational in Eatonton, Georgia. And stay with us here on Blazer Sports Report as we'll tell you what it takes to put on a remote production here on VSU TV as we have some behind-the-scenes footage from this past basketball game that we put on as well as we have some intramural football, or excuse me, intramural basketball, what time of the year is it? Intramural basketball here on Blazer Sports Report. Hi, this is Coach Jim Yarbrough, and you're watching the Blazer Sports Report. Every weekend, millions of middle-aged adults head out the door to take on a new sport or pick up where they left off in a sport they haven't played in years. This is a good thing, but there could be a downside. New physical activities bring new stresses to bones, muscles, and joints. A good reason to take new sports one step at a time with plenty of stretching and warming up. Fitness is good, but exercise common sense. A public service message from the American Academy of Orthopedic Surgeons. a better way to have fun with history. Come on, Louie. Focus, man. Visit americaslibrary.gov. Log on, play around, learn something. Hey, I'm Kylie Hill, the head coach for the Lady Blazers. You're watching Lady, the Blazer Sports Report. Stay tuned. It's ready. Well, it's that time again here at Valdosta State. Time for spring football. Fortunately, our very own Marquise Turner caught up with the team this past week. The Valdosta State football team brought their long one-month 6 a.m. workout session to an end on Friday. 
We were able to catch one of the workouts to see just how hard they can really be. We also caught up with head football coach Chris Hatchett to see how this year's boot camp was compared to camps in the past and to check out this year's spring football schedule. I think it was probably a little more difficult in that we we added an extra segment to the, the boot camp activities. We went Monday, Wednesdays, and Friday this year. Um, gave them 11 opportunities for early morning condition as opposed to eight. Um, we added a nice um, agility um, and, and weight circuit training on Friday mornings that I think the guys really seemed to like a whole bunch um, in, in, in the good sort of way. Um, but I thought it was a very good boot camp. It was very successful. Um, I think it's toughened our team up a little bit as we head into spring practice. Spring, we will practice um, every day but Tuesday and Thursday and, um, of course, hold scrimmages on Saturday. And we will end the spring with a, um, a red and black game uh, March the 30th. And this year we'll play it at Lowndes High School because of the, the work being done to Cleveland Field, which is always a, a good end to spring practice. We get the fraternities and the – the, the sororities and, and the campus recreation people together to play a little flag football game in conjunction um, with the spring game. And then we will go into a um, spring break. And when we come back, um, we've done something a little different this year. We'll finish up with our, our Blazer games um, and, and crown a Blazer game champion to end spring right before finals come around. I'm Marquise Turner reporting for the Blazer Sports Report. Looks like the Valdosta State football team will be ready in shape, as always. Now, one of the most heated intramurals here on campus has just finished up. Of course, that's basketball. This is the final week of basketball, with the all-campus champions being crowned as Calhoun's crew defeated the hypnotic squad 48-46 to in a close game. And on the women's side, the all-campus championship goes to Dynasty. One point victory over the Jeremy Sweets. Sweets, excuse me. Two close games for the championships. There are a number of productions that go on in the mass media department. Sports, Blazer Sports Report has a behind the scenes look at how a live remote is pieced together from the breaking down of cameras to the final product. BSU mass media students are often granted the opportunity to produce live sports coverage which provides real world experience. Recently hailed as the best student sports coverage in the nation by the Society of Collegiate Journalists for their coverage of VSU football games, students jumped at the chance to prove their merit by producing live coverage of men's and women's basketball. Well, uh, a couple of us came in at three o'clock and we began to break down the entire studio because it takes us breaking down the entire studio to make a good show go uh, during the basketball game. We had to break down all the cameras because we don't have enough cameras to do the basketball game and then have some in the studio as well. We only have four cameras and so to shoot a good game we got to have four different shots you know we can go to. So we had to break down all the cameras you know, and get the tripods ready and pack them all up and get ready to go. We got to be back here at nine o'clock in the morning to uh, get them in the van. Directing the basketball games is a lot of fun. Um, basketball tends to be a little more structured than other sports, so uh, if you're new to directing live sporting events, it's easy to pick up because you kind of follow the same pattern, uh, more or less. Being a Division II program here at Valdosta State, it's not, I guess, normal for uh, basketball games to be you know, put on air. You see it on the, the local nightly news coverage, but you see like maybe three takes from a couple different different angles played over and over and you see the score. Um, as far as this basketball game, we give them the opportunity to see themselves on TV, the family to get to see them, not only to see us and the work that we get to do, but you know, to, to showcase the Valdosta State University programs and to put the name out there all the TV coverage is just absolutely amazing. You know, if you can't be at the Blazer game live, hey, you got to watch on TV. It's the next best thing. About to go do uh, the play-by-play -play and color announcing. We're the sharpest dressed men in the building. And uh, seriously, no, it's going to be a lot of fun always uh, to do the men's game. One of the fastest teams on the court. It should be a, a blast. It should be awesome. My favorite part about the coverage is, is just the intensity of the game. It's 
it's fun, you know, just having to go from shot to shot and you have to really be on point. You get to hear your director screaming in your ear and you get to, you know, hear your producer screaming at you and someone's going to be screaming at you and it's just tense and you're under, under a lot of pressure so it gets you mentally prepared for having to experience that for the real world. Well, as you see, uh, these live, or not re live remotes, but these remotes that we do here on VSU TV, a lot of fun, a lot of hard work though, but I know you and I, we both enjoy doing them. Got to do a little bit more different stuff than usual, and it was good to get a different perspective of what was going on behind the scenes. That's so. right, got to put our hands on the camera and work it a little bit, but it gives us a chance to do our craft. Yeah, which is now the intramural update, That's yes. Right, as always. There you go, look at it, bright, bold letters. Ultimate Frisbee, Tuesday through Thursday, 4 to 5 p.m. That's at Norte Campus. You have some fascination with this intramural update. Soccer, Tuesday, Thursday, get out there, support your friends. 4 and 5 o'clock uh, at the place that he just said, North Campus. Tennis, Tuesday, Thursday, 7 to 10 p.m. at the Student Rec Center. What is it? Your accent. For more information, campus recreation, that's who you need to call, 333-5898. You can do every accent, I, every single one. Name one. Let this, me. no, I don't really want to. He's worried I might show him up. Probably like Tats. badminton or something. Oh, I can play some badminton. Whatever, I don't care. And nobody else out there does either, but they do care about Blazer Athletics, so that's why you're going to tune in next week. I know you are. I will. We'll see you then. Welcome to Blazer Sports Report. Mixing it up a little bit. Alongside Tiffany Johnson, I'm Kevin Allison. Yes, it is great to be here for the first time, and we've got outstanding Blazer action coming your way. That's right. And we'll st get started with Blazer basketball. They took on Montevallo in the first round of the South Region Tournament that was here at the Complex. Third-ranked Blazers taking on Montevallo for the fourth time in the season. You see Roger Ligette putting the ball up on third attempt. Crazy's going crazy. 1,400 people in attendance on the Valdosta State University campus. John Rogers, great day for him. 12 total points. Big day on the board. You saw Michael Crane, big day. 22, tried to keep it in. Gerard Jones, dishing it off to Mike Crane. He said, putting in another three-pointer. Unfortunately for the Blazers, season ended here at home in the first round. Two Montevallo, 56 to 49. As we said, Mike Crane, 22 points, five rebounds. Great day. John Rogers, an impressive day for the sophomore. 12 points, 12 rebounds, and a block. Ernest Scott, tough go of it for the senior. One for 11 shooting, one for eight on three-point lane. You see seven rebounds. Marcus Kennedy and to Marcus Mitchell. Great days, though, for Montevallo. Valdosta State. Finishes the season 13 and 1 in the conference, 25 and 4 overall in GSC. You see the Gulf South Conference champion Montevallo there, 23 and 10. Even though the Blazers lost in the first round, a great season from Coach Jim Yarbo's squad. But with basketball season finished, it's time to pick up that old dusty glove and head out to Billy Grant Field as the baseball Blazers were in action this past week. The Blazers were coasting along with the 4 to nothing lead going into the top of the eighth inning. Then the floodgates opened up for Georgia College and State as they scored nine runs in the last two innings. VSU relievers Grampton Kent and Parks Robinson gave up, up six runs at the top of the ninth as the Bobcats got men on base every way possible to post the comeback victory. 
The last spoil spoiled Stewart's performance on the day as he pitched eight innings, throwing 143 pitches and struck out 12. VSU next traveled up to Albany State as a baseball game soon turned into a con contest of who can count the highest as the two teams combined for 34 runs. Robert Morgan for the Blazers had another strong day as he went three for five with the homer and three RBI. Albany State made the game interesting with a six-run comeback in the bottom of the sixth, but with Blazers held on for the 18th victory. Another high-scoring game broke out at Billy Grant Field on the 15th. The two teams combined for 12 errors and eight pitchers used. Although he didn't pick up his first victory against Georgia College and State pitcher, Zach Stewart was successful in not, a not-so-strong showing. Robert Morgan and John McDonald each hit home runs for the Blazers. As their 21-hit performance led the way to a 19-13 win. See Valdosta State, 0-0 in the Gulf South Conference, 13-9 overall on the season. Alabama Huntsville, 17-2. Impressive start alongside West Georgia. Only three losses on the season for them. Upcoming baseball schedule, March 20th at Lincoln Memorial. It's doubleheader in Harrogate, Tennessee. And March 21st is the third game of that set. March 24th versus Columbus State Billy, at Billy Grant Field at 6 p.m. That's the baseball schedule coming up. A lot to go still on Blazer Sports Report. We've got some the updates on the golf schedule along with softball and tennis updates here at Valdosta State. Stay with us. I'm Coach Chris Hatcher of Valdosta State Blazers and you're watching the Blazer Sports Report. Go Blazers! Someday, I'll be a ballerina, just like them. And this will be my stage, where I twirl and float and swirl. Someday, this won't just be my wish. Someday, I won't be sick. They came searching for treasure. They didn't know the greatest riches were the rainforest themselves. Worth much more than gold, rainforests help protect life on our planet. That's why people are working to save them. You can learn more through the Arbor Day Foundation's Rainforest Rescue Program. You can go to the Arbor Day Foundation website, arborday.org, and check out Rainforest Rescue. It helps protect rainforests more precious than gold. These kids are in trouble. They're not getting high on drugs or stealing. If they were, you'd do something about it right now. But why is it almost half of all parents who suspect their child has a problem learning wait a year or more before getting help? Why? Kids with learning disabilities are smart. They just learn differently. Call now. The sooner you get help, the better the chance your kid has. I'm Keith Childry, 2003 Fall Intramural Tennis Champion, and you're watching Blazer Sports Report. Go Blazers! Woohoo! Thanks for tuning back in to Blazer Sports Report. We're going to get it rolling with men's and women's tennis, which both hosted here on Thursday. This past Thursday, the VSU tennis team took on the powerhouse, Auburn Montgomery and the comp at the complex. The men garnered an impressive 7-2 win with their opponents once again faltering when it comes to singles play. The Blazers swept over the competition in singles. VSU was victorious in the two, three, four, and five single matches. That is, the Blazers were able to win over Auburn Montgomery's second, third, fourth, and fifth ranked players also. The Blazers also, the Blazers were able to take on Auburn Montgomery in double matches. Second ranked player Peter, Peter Krutzfeldt had an impressive day, helping to carry our Blazers to victory. The men's tennis ranking at Hawaii Pacific at number one, West Florida at number two, BYU Hawaii at number three, number four, North Florida, Rollins University at number five, and our own Valdosta State at number seven. Urado Rinkin at number three in national rankings, and we have Christoph Schneider at number 29. 
The men's tennis schedule is as follows. March 19th versus North, Them North Alabama at the PE Complex Tennis Courts at 6 p.m. We also have on the 20th coming up Southwest Baptist, which will also be held at the Complex Tennis Courts at 9 a.m. March 20th, the men's tennis, will, tennis team will be playing Tuskegee University at the tennis court at 2 p.m. And in Gainesville, Florida at 2 p.m., they'll be playing Drury University on the 23rd of March. Congratulations for uh, Christoph Schneider and Eduardo Rincon, both top in the country for singles uh, players. And also, that it's interesting, that March 20th match Two different matches, same day, one's a makeup. So a lot of tennis out of the complex. But what's so great about tennis, same yellow ball, same rackets, women do the same exact thing. Well, Lady Blazers were not so lucky this past Thursday. Auburn Montgomery was able to gain an 8-1 victory over the team. Lady Blazers were unfortunately not playing to the top of their abilities, but looked to pick, up, pick back up in the coming weeks. The Auburn Montgomery team was a hurdle for the Lady Blazers, but it is not to say that they weren't able to outgrow this loss within the matter of days. So the national rankings by ITA, BYU Hawaii coming in at one, Linden University at two, Dallas State just out of the top 10, number 11th in the country. South region rankings though, better for them. Dallas State at three, Watchdog Baptist one, West Florida at two. And for the women's rankings nationally, Ava Pechnik, Sixth overall, upcoming March 19th at the complex, they host North Alabama, six o'clock start, and March 20th, Tuskegee University comes in town at two o'clock. On March 10th, the softball Blazers hosted Southern Indiana in a two-game set. In the first game, Southern Indiana threw out number one starter Shannon Emmons, who pitched a complete game, allowing just one run. The Blazers fell behind in the top of the fourth when Southern Indiana scored two runs without the benefit of a hit. Kristen Irvin would answer reaching on a fielder's choice while Tanya Coffey scored to cut the lead to one run in the Invaders. From Indiana would not relinquish another run if they tacked on one or more to the game, three to one. In the second game on Wednesday, the softball Blazers received an excellent pitching performance from Brooke King. King pitched a complete game, allowing just one earned run on four hits. After giving up on an early run lead, the Blazers rallied in the bottom of the sixth on the strength of a Holly Willis RBI single and a Caddy Murray sacrifice fly to take a 3-2 lead. King pitched a scoreless seventh for the ladies' sixth win of the season. And the standings as of March 15th, we have West Florida, 6-0, and we have Alabama Huntsville, 3-0, Lincoln Memorial, 1-0, West Alabama, 4-0, 4-3, I'm sorry, West Georgia, 2-5, and Valdosta State, 1-8. Softball schedule, March 19th through the 21st, is going to be at USC at Spartanburg, South Carolina. March 23rd at the University of North Florida, Jacksonville, Florida at 5 p.m. And that's our softball schedule. The Blazer golf team had a chance to relax a little bit after competing in four tournaments that took place inside of a month. The team is gearing up for their final few tournaments of the year, which include the Gulf South Conference Tournament at the end of the year. See, on March 29th and 30th, travel to Edenton, Georgia for the Bobcat Invitational little tune-up for the last two tournaments. Hitting the home stretch of the Blazer Sports Report, and when we return, we've got all the information you need to know on how to become physically active. You're watching Blazer Sports Report. Go, Go Blazers! Blazers! Valdosta State University, in service to its students. The professors here at Valdosta State University really give us a lot of hands-on experience. The professors are easy to understand and they're enthusiastic about teaching. They really um, help the students. They do everything they can to make sure that you get the education you need. They always bent over backwards to help me out. Providing a premier educational experience, Valdosta State University is Georgia's regional partner.
The only difference between a grape and a raisin is time spent in the sun. Ever wonder what the sun is doing to you? You'd never know it on the battlefield. But nearly half of today's military are National Guard and reservists. However, they can't answer our nation's call without their employer's support. If you're an employer, visit ESGR.org and find out how to do your part. After all, their response depends on yours. This is your girl, Amber Daniels, number 32, and you're watching me on the Blazer Sports Report. Back here on Blazer Sports Report, and as always, we've got the latest information on your intramurals, how to become active, what to go see, you know, how to get yourself involved. Mm -hmm. And that also means one of my favorites, intramural softball. Welcome to the first full week of intramural softball. This is a highly anticipated sport as guys and gals wait all year long just to participate in this sport. Softball games are played all week long from 7 to 10. Guys games are played on Mondays and Wednesdays and the girls play on Tuesdays and Thursdays at Freedom Park. It's a long ride out to Freedom Park, but I guarantee it is worth the gas money. I completely agree with that statement because softball, I love going out there just to play, to watch. Yeah. You probably see me out there quite a bit, but... I think others... I did see you one time. <laughs> it's very possible. That... We do have other sports that you can go participate in, go watch, and right now, guess what time it is there, Tiffany? What time is it? Intramural update time. Uh-oh. Yeah. Badminton. Entries are due on Tuesday, March 23rd, and my comrade is not here to see what time we need to get our entries in. Okay, swimming meet entries are due Tuesday, March 23rd, so make sure you get those in. Soccer, Monday through Thursday, 4 and 5 o'clock at North Campus. Might see some tempers flying out there. I know I did. Tennis every Tuesday and Thursday, 7 p.m. through 10 p.m. at the Complex Tennis Courts. And as always, for more information, call Campus Recreation, 333-5898. Thanks for filling in for Bryce this week, Tiffany. No problem. Thank you for having me. Hey, anytime. Thanks. Hopefully <laughs> next week, you might see me gone. Bryce may be back. We'll see, but thank you. We and... miss you, Bryce. <laughs> Come back next week, everybody, and we've got everything here at Blazer Sports Report. Welcome to Blazer Sports Report. Alongside Bryce Sermon, I'm Kevin Allison. We've got golf, tennis, softball, and intramurals. But first, Blazer Baseball was in action over the weekend. That's right, and the Blazer Baseball started this week off against interstate rival to the west, Thomas University, who traveled a grueling 45 minutes down Highway 84 to pay, play at Billy Grant. The Blazers' bats would start up red-hot offensive week against the Nighthawks by putting up six runs in the first three innings of play. With a strong pitching performance from Brian Bennett, that was all the Blazers would need. Bennett went all seven innings and allowed three runs on seven hits. Blazers win 13-3 in a blowout. On Saturday, the Blazers traveled to Lincoln Memorial and the Blazers continued to flame, torching the rail splitters for 24 runs. BSU jumped out to a 9-0 lead in the first two innings, adding four in the fourth and seven in the sixth on route to, 19, to a 19-run victory. 
Greg Connell went three for six, driving in seven runs and smashing two long balls. The Blazers' strength was at the top of the lineup, though, where Robert Morgan and Josh Owsley went a combined seven for ten, scoring seven runs and driving in four. 24 to five, the final. The second game on Saturday appeared to be heading the same as the first when the Blazers jumped out to a 10 to three lead. Not to be blown out again, the rail splitters trucked off six runs in the bottom of the third and fourth innings to pull within one. Driving Blazers started Robbie Walkman from the game. LMU tied the game in the bottom of the fifth on a Mickey Apple RBI single. The Blazers snatched a victory, though, on an LMU fielding error when Greg Connell reached on a fielder's choice, scoring Josh Owsley. 11-10, Blazers take it. In the final game of the weekend series, Valdosta State once again took an early lead, putting a three spot up in the second. LMU tied the game in the bottom of the fifth when the Blazers combined a pass ball and an error to give the rail splitters three runs, one of which was unearned. The Blazers then took a 5-3 lead in the top of the seventh with a D. Lou double that drove in two. Around came the bottom of the ninth when the Blazer bullpen couldn't hold a two-run lead. Jim Wernke's two-run double capped off the LMU comeback. Blazers lose it 6-5. Valdosta State 2 and 1 to open up Gulf South Conference play set 16 and 10 overall but look at West Georgia 24 and 4 wonder how strong their out of conference schedule was Upcoming schedule March 27th versus Alabama Huntsville that's at Billy Grant Field 1 p.m. and then March 28th Alabama Huntsville again 1:30 start March 30th the Blazers travel all the way to Savannah, Georgia, recovering from St. Patty's Day weekend. Armstrong at Glenite State will try to beat the Blazers at 3 p.m. And then April 1st, Flagler College at St. Augustine, Florida, 5 p.m. start to that one. Blazers softball has played 10 games in the past week, going only one for eight as they look to turn around their fortunes against North Florida on Wednesday. The ladies of softball took on the 37-2 Ospreys with Brooke King getting the nod. King pitched three scoreless innings before Gretchen Hackett took over. VSU tied up the game on consecutive RBI singles from Lindsey Walker and Holly Willis. Unfortunately, the Blazers couldn't hold on in the bottom of the seventh when Laura Hanstein, Hanstein drove in the game-winning run on a sacrifice fly. In the second game in Jacksonville, the ladies received a stellar pitching performance from senior Brooke King, pitching a complete game of seven innings. King allowed only two hits and struck out four. The only, one, the only run of the game came from Tiffany Moon after she re reached on a single. Moon took second on a wild pitch and then scored when Katie Murray's grounder to short was thrown past the first baseman. Standings as of March 21st, the Lady Blazers 1-8 and in Gulf South Conference, 8-26 overall. Alabama Huntsville leading the conference 6-0, 24-5. West Florida behind, also undefeated in the conference, 18-12 overall in the season. Upcoming for the ladies, March 26th through the 28th, take part in the Florida Southern Tur Tournament in Lakeland, Florida. Times are to be announced. And March 30th at Albany State, doubleheader in Albany, Georgia at 2 o'clock. April 2nd and 3rd, Gulf South Conference crossover in Decatur, Alabama. Times also to be announced. Well, the men's Blazer tennis team is really starting to heat up, shutting out two of their last four opponents. In their third matchup in the Gulf South, the Blazers smashed the Lions of North Alabama in a 9-0 route. The Blazers' next matchup was against Southern Baptist, where Valdosta State continued with their winning ways with a 7-2 victory. The Blazers also locked horns with Tuskegee this past week, shutting them down for a 6-0 win. The Blazers' number one player, Eduardo Rincon, is now ranked third in the nation. Upcoming men's tennis schedule March 29th, University of North Florida at Jacksonville. 2 p.m. start to that one. That's not too far away for you. And March 30th, Georgia College and State comes to town at the Complex Tennis Courts, 2 p.m. April 1st, University of West Florida, the Argos host the Blazers at Pensacola, Florida, 3 p.m. start in Wachita Baptist University, Pensacola, Florida. They'll play 1 p.m. Those are Gulf South Conference matchups. April 3rd, BYU, Hawaii at Pensacola, 10 a.m. start to that one, and Delta State on the same day, same time, or same place, 4 p.m. start. The ladies of the Blazer tennis are not to be outdone, as they have shut out their last three opponents and now have the sixth-ranked player in the nation, German sophomore Aver Pechnik. 
The ladies started this week's, this week's string of shutouts by laying the smack down on GSC opponent North Alabama. The Blazers took the bout an amazing nine to nothing, leaving the hapless Lady Lions in the dust. Valdosta State continued their strong play once again, forcing a Tuskegee goose egg by winning five to nothing. The Blazers also boast the 11th ranked doubles team with Pechnig and junior Iris Staub. Upcoming for the women's tennis matches at University of North Florida in Jacksonville, Florida. And March 30th, Georgia College of State. They host them at the Complex Tennis Courts, 2 o'clock. April 1st, down in Pensacola against University of West Florida. And the next day at Wachita Baptist University. They play them also in Pensacola. It's a 10 a.m. start. And April 3rd versus BYU Hawaii. Also, the matches take place in Pensacola, Florida. It's 1 o'clock. We'll be back here on Blazer Sports Report with an interview from golf coach Jared Purvis and your intramural update. Stay tuned, everybody. Hi, this is coach Jim Yarbrough, and you're watching the Blazer Sports Report. I'm Joan Chen with a message for people of all nationalities who come to America for what it has to offer, including protection from discrimination when you want to rent or buy a home. It is against the law for anyone to deny you housing because of your national origin the color of your skin, or the size of your family. Know your rights and use them. If you've been treated unfairly when it comes to housing, contact HUD for help. HUD is on your side. I can listen. I can cook. Good. I can coach. Kids with something to do are less likely to do drugs. I can drive. I can paint. I can dance. A little of your time can make a lifetime of difference. I can read. I can help. You can help. Call toll-free 1-877-KIDS-313 to find out about community drug prevention programs. I can keep a kid off drugs. I could reach the star. Oh, one down for you. So you can see the truth. That I can Welcome back to the Blazer Sports Report. Still a lot of Blazer athletics to talk about, including your intramural update, but some golf action. Absolutely right, Bryce. And Blazer Sports Report was able to track down Blazer golf coach Jared Purvis for an interview. The Blazer Sports Report recently had a chance to catch up with coach Jared Purvis about the VSU golf team. The California last week for UC San Diego's tournament. It's played at San Luis Club, which is a great golf course up in the mountains, just north of San Diego. We finished seventh out of 19. Uh, six of the top 10 teams in the nation were there. Probably 10 of the top 25 teams were there. We managed to beat several of them. Uh, we beat our conference, one of our conference foes, Central Arkansas, who the entire year has been ranked ahead of us. Kevin Dukowski, uh, freshman from Boston, Massachusetts, uh, finished seventh as an individual, which was awesome. Our next tournament is Georgia College's tournament up at Tuscaloosa Golf Club on Lake Oconee. Uh, it's March 29th and 30th. Several of the top teams, once again, will be there. Southeastern region will be represented very well, along with ourselves, Rollins, or Florida Southern, and West Florida will be there from the South region. It'll give us a chance to make up some ground on some of the Southeast region teams for national selections. Follow that, we have our tournament here on April 5th and 6th at the Country Club. And then two weeks after that, we travel out to Arkansas for conference. Each, team, each tournament is pivotal. Uh, Georgia Colleges, it'll give us our, pretty much our last chance to even up some of our head-to-head uh, -head meetings with several of those teams or even pull ahead, because that will be the last time that we get to see some of those teams before regionals or nationals. Uh, our tournament, we always have one of the best fields in the nation for Division II. Once again, we're at, we got another top field. It will be, it will give us another chance to even up the, uh, our matches against the South Region teams. 
mainly from the Sunshine Conference because we'll not get to see them again until regionals. And then conference is, of course, conference. You win conference, you automatically go to regionals. You don't have to worry about regional selection or anything. Uh, and right now we're, we're doing well in, in our region standing. So if we can play well in conference, we should uh, have a good chance of making it to postseason. Obviously, Chris Irwin turning pro, it hurt the depth of the team. But it was a decision you know, that he had to make. Uh, I always support my players' decisions, uh, even though I may not always agree with it. You know, it's, it's his decision. I support him 100%, and we all wish him the best of luck. Thank you, Coach Purvis, for your time, and this is Jimmy Osborne reporting for the Blazer Sports Report. A lot to look forward for with the young Blazer golf team and Coach Jared Purvis, and upcoming on the 29th and 30th, they take part in, the Eden, in, in Edenton, Georgia, for the Bobcat Invitational. All right, we'll be back with your intramural update right here on Blazer Sports Report. Stay tuned. Oh, yeah. Hey, I'm Kylie Hill, the head coach for the Lady Blazers. You're watching Lady, the Blazer Sports Report. Stay tuned. It's ready. There are people with a calling. Most serve one weekend a month and two weeks a year. Earning money for college. Protecting their community. In the Army National Guard, you can. I was in an accident and had to go in an ambulance. It hurt a lot and I was real scared. Daddy looks scared too. Where they taking it? Every two seconds, someone needs blood. Accident victims, cancer patients, children. Please call the American Red Cross at 1-800-GIVE-LIFE because someone needs you right now. The girl. Was it you who saved my life? The danger dog will bite your ankle. The danger dog will bite your ear. The danger dog will bite your bottom if you come Want to feel appreciated? When you spend time with kids, anytime, it helps prevent crime. You're watching Blazer Sports Report. Go, Go Blazers! Blazers! Hey, it's that time again. Already? Yeah, already. Check your watches. It's time for the intramural update. You don't Blowing. say. Letters, computer, text, soccer, Monday through Thursday at 4 p.m. and 5 p.m. at North Campus. Get out there, kick the ball around where you're cleats and shin guards and whatever else. It's playoff time for that sport. Softball Mondays through Thursdays, 8 o'clock to 11. Get out there, support friends, family, whoever you have playing. Maybe you can join on a team. I don't know. Get out there and watch. Ball's not very soft. Here's some soft balls. Tennis. They're fuzzy. They're bright yellow. And every Tuesday and Thursday at 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. at the complex, you can see them knock those fuzzy balls around. <laughs> For more information, call up Campus Rec, 333-5898. <laughs> the power of tennis. I mean, you get to go out there and just, bam, smash it. It's re release of aggression. Fuzzy yellow balls. Yeah, stay with us. Uh, more Blazer Sports Report next week. We'll do better. Spring break time.
Welcome to this week's edition of the Blazer Sports Report. Alongside my partner, Bryce Zimmerman, I'm Kevin Allison. Thanks for tuning in because we've got football, golf, tennis, and softball. But first, a look to the diamond as the Blazers hosted the Chargers of Alabama Huntsville this weekend. The Blazers opened play on Saturday with a nine-inning matchup to be followed by a seven-inning game. Head coach Tommy Thomas received a gritty performance from starting pitcher Adam Lingenfelter as Lingenfelter pitched a complete game, allowing just one run and stymieing 10 Charger batters in a 157-pitch effort. Valdosta State took a 2-1 lead in the bottom of the third and never looked back, going on to win one 7-1. In the nightcap of the doubleheader, the Blazers jumped out to a 7-run lead in the bottom of the third as the Blazers sent 12 batters to the plate and forced three errors. UAH would recharge their battery, chipping away at the lead to make it 7-4 going into the bottom of the fifth. The Chargers had another three-error inning, and the Blazers took advantage once again, scoring three runs. Huntsville gave VSU a scare in the final inning, forcing three runs off Nick Kitchens before Will Thompson recorded the final two outs for a save and a victory. In the final game on Sunday, VSU was shut down by Chargers starter Tide Meadows. Meadows went all nine innings, allowing just five hits and two runs. The Chargers churned out 14 hits and seven runs to defeat Valdosta State and salvage one game in the series. This is from March 24th. Columbus State University beats Valdosta State 8-3. Brian Bennett got the start, 8.1 innings pitched, nine hits, four earned runs allowed. David Brown, three for four for Columbus State, seven RBIs. There's that 7-1 victory over UAH. Lingenfelter pitched that great complete game with 10 strikeouts. Top of the lineup doing an outstanding job once again as Rob Morgan and Josh Owsley combined for eight hits, a home run, a double, and four RBIs. 10-7, Valdosta State, we already talked about this one a little bit, but Zach Stewart got the start. Only four and a third innings pitch, six hits allowed, three earned runs, only three strikeouts. John McDonald, one for three with a double and two RBIs. UAH almost stole this one from Valdosta State. UAH wins the Sunday game, March 28th, 7-2. Robbie Walkman got hit hard, seven hits, four earned runs allowed. John McDonald did have a home run and two RBIs, but it wasn't enough as Tide Meadows that complete game in West Long's two-for-four effort with a home run and two RBIs. And then Armstrong Atlantic just on March 30th, beats Valdosta State 8-4. Bennett got the start, six innings pitched. Robert Morgan was once again two for five, but he couldn't overcome the six errors from Valdosta State. Four for four day from Brandon McKinnon. Valdosta State four and two in the Gulf South Conference, 18 and 12 overall. West Georgia on top, 26 and six record, but still a tough conference record of four and two. Lincoln Memorial at the bottom, very even throughout all those records. Collegiate newspaper baseball poll, Valdosta State is ranked 30th, 18 and 12 record, but you see a lot of local teams with Rollins 30 and 4, North Florida just from Jacksonville 24 and 10, and Gulf South Conference foe, Delta State 25 and 7. Upcoming schedule, April 3rd, West Alabama comes to town, 1 p.m. start to that one, and then following day, another 1.30 start at Billy Grant. April 8th, Georgia College and State, that's at Milledgeville, Georgia, 3 p.m. start. April 9th, the Valdosta State Blazers travel to hated West Georgia in Carrollton. Two games, that's a 1 p.m. start for the 9th and a 1 p.m. start once again for the 10th in Carrollton. And the University of North Florida comes up to Valdosta from Jacksonville, 6 p.m. start on April 13th. VSU softball was also in action, and the Lady Blazers ventured down to Lakeland, Florida on the 24th to try to cut down the Lady Buccaneers. VSU got on the board early as Holly Willis singled up the middle to try to score, or to score, Jesse Ortiz. Barry answered back in the next half inning as Delilah Stroop crossed the plate off of a wild pitch. In the bottom of the third, the Blazer bat struck again with Tiffany Moon doubling the center with Jesse Ortiz once again touching home. Moon then scored when, when Lindsey Walker singled down the right field line. Unfortunately for the Lady Blazers, Delilah Stroop wasn't done on the day as she belted her sixth home run of the year to tie the game at three. Barry then tacked on the winning run of the game in the extra frame as Barry took full advantage of the rules that allows for the teams to begin, with, be, begin the inning with the runner on second. Lady Bucks worked her around on a sacrifice bunt and then on a ground ball to short as they win the thriller four to three. 
Next up for the ladies were the Golden Rams of Albany State, as a pitcher's duel was in order for the two teams. Albany State's starting pitcher, Miss Harris, went the full seven innings, but two early earned runs allowed were her undoing. The combination of Gretchen Hatchett and Ashley Ward for VSU allowed three hits and one run, as Albany State had no offensive answer. Valdosta State was victorious in this nail-biter by one. The nightcap was a polar opposite as VSU belted out 11 hits, including a triple and double by Kelly Summers, as she had two RBIs on the day. Six runners also stole bases for the Lady Blazers, as Albany State threw out Miss Harris once again for back-to-back -back games. Five innings later, an impressive pitching performance by Brooke King spelled victory for VSU. Standings as of March 28th, you see the highlighted Valdosta State Blazers, 1-8 in the Gulf South Conference, 13-29 overall. Alabama Huntsville leading the way, undefeated in Gulf South Conference play, 28-5 on the year with West Florida tra trailing right behind with only two defeats. Softball schedule for this week, April 6th versus Spring Hill, doubleheader at the softball complex, 3 o'clock first pitch. And for the rest of the week and spring break, April 9th at Harrigan, Tennessee, take a Lincoln Memorial for a doubleheader with the third game following the next day. On the 13th, Thomas University comes to town, doubleheader, and Clark Atlanta comes in to VSU one day later on the 14th. Both men's and women's blazer tennis were in action this past week, first traveling to Jacksonville to take on North Florida and then hosting Georgia College and State on Tuesday. In a tough matchup with the fourth-ranked Ospreys, the seventh-ranked Blazers could not pull out the victory, losing the match 6-3. The men's team is now 10-2 and, and lost for the first time in eight matches. It was a different story for the ladies of tennis as they squeaked out a 5-4 win in their first-ever victory over the Ospreys. It's now seven straight wins for the Lady Blazers, and they're now ranked 11th in the nation. There you see ITA men's national tennis ranking, Valdosta State, eighth in the nation, but some familiar names, North Florida up there, University of West Florida, all local teams. Men's tennis schedule, April 3rd versus BYU Hawaii in Pensacola, Florida, 10 a.m. start to that one. And then also April 3rd versus Delta State at 4 p.m. ITA Women's National Tennis Rankings, Valdosta State number 11, but Rollins College, University of West Florida, Lynn University, Armstrong Atlantic, all in the Southeast region. BYU Hawaii is on top. Upcoming women's tennis schedule, April 3rd, BYU Hawaii, Pensacola, Florida. That's the number one team in the nation, 1 p.m. start. The men of the Blazer golf team hit the links again after having a few weeks off. This time, they travel up to Edenton, Georgia for the Bobcat Invitational. The tournament, which was hosted by Georgia College and State, took the field out on the par 70, 6,847-yard co course. Spencer Provo led the Blazers with a 224 total for three rounds. Others competing were Scott Meyer, Brian Hertzak, Kevin Dutkowski, and Michael Collins, as the team finished ninth overall. Armstrong Atlantic took top honors, dominating the competition, finishing 12 shots ahead of Carson Newman. The team shot 55 over par. Blazers are 68 and 61 on the season. And upcoming on April 5th, Valdosta State hosts the Southeastern Collegiate Tournament. Be an incredible field here at the Valdosta Country Club. Well, we'll be back with red and black football action along with some basketball news right here on your Blazer Sports Report. Hey, I'm Kylie Hill, the head coach for the Lady Blazers. You're watching the Blazer Sports Report. Stay tuned, it's ready. You can make a difference right in your own neighborhood. Clean communities are healthier, safer, and more prosperous, and we all have a part to play. We invite you to join thousands of volunteers from across Georgia and the nation during the Great American Cleanup as we clean, paint, and plant our way to more beautiful communities. Hundreds of events are planned statewide this April, so there is sure to be one near you. Get involved, and let's keep working together to keep Georgia beautiful. I wanted to help. I just didn't know where to begin. I wanted to do something, but what did I have to offer? I can only help at certain times. Volunteer? Nah, not me. I wanted to include my family. I found it on the internet. It's cool. Now we can volunteer together. I do have something to give. I'll be seeing you in all the old familiar places that this heart
heart of mine embraces all day through. I'll find you in the morning sun, and when the night is new, I'll be looking at the moon, but I'll be seeing you. I'm Coach Chris Hatcher of Valdosta State Blazers, and you're watching the Blazers Sports Report. Go Blazers! Back here on Blazers Sports Report, and though basketball season may be over, there are still some accolades to give out. The Lady Blazers received some recognition as senior Danielle Hernandez was named to the Gulf South Conference All-Academic Team. Hernandez boasts a 3.65 grade point average and earlier this year became a member of the 1,000 point club. For the men, head coach Jim Yarbrough has done it yet again as the NABC named him South Region Coach of the Year in just his fourth year at BSU. Coach Yarbrough has had a pair of 20 win seasons plus a 25 win season in the 2003-2004 year. Even though football season doesn't start until next fall, the Blazers have begun the steps to reclaim their GSC crown. Marquise Turner has more on the red and black game. The Blazers football team ends the 2004 spring practice with the annual red and black game. The red and black game consists of campus red and Greek life teamed up with the Blazers. The game was held at Lyons County's Martin Stadium due to the destruction of Bazemar Hydem with a great turnout crowd of students and alumni. The game was filled with non-stop action on both sides with hard hits from the defense and explosive runs from the offense. This year's team is filled with a lot of new faces who are expected to play a key role in the coming up season. We later catch up with junior defensive end Justin DeHaven and head coach Chris Hatchett to hear the comments on the game. Uh, I felt I had a pretty good game. We've had a pretty good spring, been working hard. Uh, you know, I felt, uh, you know, we, we looked pretty good out there today. You know, I had a good time. That's what it's all about. I thought it was a very good game. There was a sluggish start by both offenses. The defense dominated early, and then as the, the game progressed, we um, had a few scores there, but um, it's a good wrap-up to spring ball, and it's, as you guys know, it's something that you look forward to, um, to come out and have a f little bit of fun in a time of the year where there really ain't a whole lot of competition except amongst yourselves. Well, the red and black game is a tradition here at Valdosta State, and it's nice to see the football players getting some spring practice. Right, a little culmination of the spring practice, a little fun, a little reward. Get some of the uh, flag football players out there as well. It's true. And uh, looks like Coach Hunter's going to have his team ready for this upcoming season. You see, the football schedule has been announced. September 4th, it's the first game at Albany State, 7 o'clock. September 11th at Watchdog Baptist, 8 o'clock. And then the first home game is September 18th, as we host Harding, 1 o'clock, here in Valdosta. September 25th, travel to Central Arkansas, 7 o'clock start. But then Delta State comes into town on October 2nd. So 1 o'clock is, I guess, the kickoff. And October 9th at Henderson State, 4 o'clock. October 16th, travel to West, actually, I'm sorry, West Alabama comes to town, and it's our homecoming October 23rd at North Alabama. What's interesting about that, that's their homecoming. That's a 7 o'clock start for them. A little bit arrogant of the Lions there, yeah, don't you think? after, I guess, their season last year on October 30th, Southern Arkansas comes to town, 1 o'clock game. A lot of 1 o'clock starts here at Valdosta. And November 6th, last game of the season, travel up to the hated West Georgia Bla Braves, 7 o'clock is kickoff. Well, we are not done here at the Blazers Sports Report because we still have your intramural update along with an interview of an NFL prospect. Stay with us. I'm Keith Childry, 2003 Fall Intramural Tennis Champion, and you're watching Blazers Sports Report. Go Blazers! Woohoo! Valdosta State University, Georgia's regional partner, is the cultural crossroads of South Georgia. Whether it's the Valdosta Symphony Orchestra, the VSU Art Gallery, or musical theater on Jekyll Island, University programs provide numerous opportunities for you to enjoy the arts. The College of the Arts annually provides hundreds of artistic experiences on campus and throughout the region, building momentum for the millennium, the arts at VSU. Introducing the all-new Enclave. It's a minivan to the max, with features like remote control sliding rear doors, 150 cable channels, a full sky view roof, temperature-controlled cup holders, and the six-point navigation system. It's the minivan for families on the go. 
Welcome to Valdosta State University. Beautiful, isn't it? Are you upset about pesticides in your food, crude oil in your oceans, littering in our streets, clear-cutting of national forests, the killing of dolphins and sea turtles, destruction of wetlands? Now's the time to join Students Against Violating the Environment. SAVE helps by raising awareness among the student and faculty body about environmental issues on campus, in the community, and around the world. It's easy to make a difference. Simply call this number and join SAVE. Think globally, act locally. You're watching the Blazer Sports Report. Go Blazers! Blazers! Welcome back to the Blazer Sports Report. The football team may have been in action on Tuesday, but wide receiver Tyrone Jordan was attempting to better his status for the NFL draft. Blazer Sports Report caught Tyrone to discuss his dream of making the league. I'm Jimmy Osborne for the Blazer Sports Report, and I just caught up with the enlightened and spiritual Tyrone Jordan. He's going to give us a few seconds of his time to to fill us in on his hopes of getting drafted by the NFL. If you do get drafted, uh, are you going to remember your roots, pretty much where you came from, and you know people yep. around you? Yeah, because um, there's a lot of people back home. You know what I'm saying? For us, Willa Coochie ain't really had nobody come from Willa Coochie who's who done really accomplished anything. And so I hear it all the time, you know what I'm saying? We hope you make it, and we hope you make it. I should get fed out on my heart. And so it's not necessarily from a selfish intent, but I want to do it for them also, you know what I'm saying? So they can have something to talk about and tell their kids when, when their kids grow up or for them to tell other people, you know what I'm saying, around the community that someone will put Willie Coochie on the map, so to speak. And also, man, it's from, from my church family, you know what I'm saying? I feel like, uh, it's a lot of prayers going up for it and a lot of hope and a lot of people come and tell me, Tommy, you're going to make it and that, that, and the other. And that's very encouraging to me, so... I'm not by any means going to forget where I come from, you know, because I ain't really never had nothing, you know what I'm saying? And I'm going to pray for God to just keep me level-minded so so that whenever I get there, I still have the same mentality I have right now, you know what I'm saying? Still be humble, still be patient, still pay my tithe at church, still remember God above all. Where do you see Tyrone Jordan five years from now? Well, honestly, um, after five years, if it's, well, whoever God, well, I, Whoever God want me to be at, because right now I'm going into it as, okay, God, is something that you want me to do. You know, I understand that our church needs some, needs some help. Our pastor needs some help. I, I want to be able to help my family. But when it's all said and done, when they, when they give me okay to quit, I'm going to quit. You know what I'm saying? Give it up. And I want to pursue a teaching and coaching career at um, my local high school, Jackson County, my alma mater. And also just uh, just raise my family, man. You know what I'm saying? Be a family man. Uh, go to church, serve God, and, and just enjoy life, you know? And, and whatever else come up net, and I just I pursue that. But I see myself for five years being home in Willa Coochie, you know what I'm saying, in a nice built home, working for Agassiz County, you know what I'm saying, coaching there, enjoying teaching and, and raising my family, and watching my little boy and whoever else I have I have by then grow up, you know, have that family environment and just go to church, man. What sets Tyrone Jordan apart from people like Larry Fitzgerald and Mike Williams, you know, and other people getting drafted? I don't know as far as um, what they're thinking by any means. I, I understand that a lot of other people, you know what I'm saying, like the D1 schools, like Mike Williams, Larry Fitzgerald got, you know what I'm saying, as uh, far as it's more exposure than what I do. But I think my edge as of right now and for my personal note is God, you know. If God be for me, then who can be against me? And I know that if I just continue to hold on, you know, and have faith in God, he's going to see me through this thing. And I just got to pray for right now for God to fix my mind because, it's so easy to get caught up looking into the odds and get caught up looking into, you know what I'm saying, earthly standards, so to speak, you know what I'm saying, stats and all that there. But two months ago, it wasn't nothing, you know what I'm saying? Two months ago, I got all kinds of negativity from, 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 from people who I thought would encourage me, you know what I'm saying? But God taught me how to survive through those times, and two months later, I'm here, you know what I'm saying? And now, over half of the teams I'm called, you know what I'm saying, with Christian film and, and also got a lot of personal information and numbers. and. I feel real good right now because God done brought me through that for two months. So who, can, who is it to say that he can't, you know what I'm saying, make me go through it around, so to speak. So I'm just trusting in God to see me through this thing every step of the way, not not getting conceited along the way, not not thinking selfishly along the way, but making sure, making sure God is just teach me, you know what I'm saying, how to go through, how to, how to just be patient and just wait on him. What have you done differently trying to get drafted as opposed to what you did during the season? Uh, for one thing, I feel... I feel more secure, you know what I'm saying? I, I've been praying more, of course, for, for God to give me patience. Um, I've been working out um, 
My workouts are more intense. Now I work out twice a day. I work out, work out once, in, once in the morning at 7. And I go run either at 2 o'clock or about an hour or 2. And um, just being by myself, you know what I'm saying? Basically, um, I, I don't too much. I have a workout partner. I work out by myself and just stand motivated. Knowing if I can encourage myself. But when I'm by myself, then when I get around other people, you know what I'm saying, a competition, then that's going to give me that extra extra boost, you know, pump on my adrenaline a little bit, so to speak. Are you, uh, overall, are you proud of your college career? Uh, man, uh, not really, because I ain't, I came in 2000, you know what I'm saying, I played, a little, I played my freshman year, I registered my sophomore year, I started my junior year, well, I started my freshman sophomore year and started my junior year, and, and, man, my whole time here was just nothing but an emotional roller coaster. You know what I'm saying? It was from one extreme to another. I was I had all intentions of, of doing this and accomplishing this and, 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 and being an all American and having a thousand yards receiving, seven receptions, maybe fifteen touchdowns, making all conference and all that there or whatnot. But I don't know, man. I guess it wasn't meant to happen. And I and if I dwell on it then I won't never move on. So I have let it go. I pray for God to give me strength to let it go and I don't wanna look at that no more. I didn't wanna talk about it. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of things hit home and then my time here, I blame it on nobody, not the coaches, not my players, not my teammates, but I blame it on myself. And um, I just got to let it go in order for me to move on. It's Jimmy Osborne for the Blazer Sports Report, and um, I just want to thank you for the interview. Thank, thank you for your time, man. I wish you the luck, future. Thank you. Good luck. We'll see you. Well, thank you, Jimmy. And I know, Bryce, you and I would both say good luck to Tyrone. Have a, good, have a chance to work with Tyrone on an everyday basis. He is a mass media student here at Valdosta State. I hope he does well and does well at the Combines and gets drafted. It'd be some story coming from Willow Coochie. So everybody here wishes you the best of luck, Tyrone. But as Blazer Sports Board has to move on, maybe some other people have some aspiring dreams to be crowned to intramural championship. Exactly. You know, the T-shirt's the same thing as being drafted into the NFL. Yeah, and it's time for your intramural update. Hey! Softball, Monday through Thursday from 8 to 11 at Freedom Park. Come out. And uh, do your best impression of A-Rod. Badminton championships are April 16th at 3 p.m. That would be interesting to go watch. I don't know any celebrities from that, but maybe there will be some created. Can't feel I missed out by not playing some badminton. Four on four flag football Tuesday, April 13th, or your entries are due. Thursday, April 15th is the captain's meeting. Crazy. Three on three water basketball. Awesome. Tuesday, April 13th are your, is when your entries are due. Combining two th great things, water and basketball. Three sport Fun challenge way. Tuesday, April 20th, or when your entries are due. Not sure which sports they are, yeah. but there will be three of them. Maybe water basketball. For more information, call Campus Recreation 333-5898. Everybody out there, you know, it's it's almost time for spring break and just we're about you have a safe one, but I asked for sunglasses. This is all I could get. You so. know, could you really get on Big Brother with those type of glasses? <laughs> I don't care. All I want is fame and women. That's why I'm on TV. Fame and women, you heard it here on Blazer Sports Report. Catch us next time. See ya. Have a good spring break. Be safe.